The central processing unit is the core component of any computer system, sometimes called the brain of the computer. It's responsible for executing software instructions, performing mathematical and logical calculations, maintaining system security, detecting and handling errors, and overseeing data transfers between components within the system, among many other roles. The fundamental mode of operation of a processor is an iterative process called the instruction cycle, also known as the fetch-decode-execute cycle. This continuous cycle is the core mechanism by which a processor executes all software instructions, beginning when the computer starts and stopping when it is shut down. These instructions could be as simple as adding two numbers, moving data from one place to another, or checking if a value is zero. The CPU's native language is defined by its instruction set architecture, or ISA, which includes a predefined list of all the instructions a specific CPU can understand. Different CPUs have different ISAs. For example, Intel and AMD processors use x86, which implements a complex instruction set computer architecture, also known as CISC, while the processors in smartphones use ARM, which implements a reduced instruction set computer architecture, also known as RISC. Modern processors are incredibly complex. At the most fundamental level, a processor is made up of several units that work together to execute instructions and perform computations. The arithmetic logic unit, or ALU, which handles math and logical operations. The register file, which stores data that the processor needs to access quickly. The load store unit, or LSU, which handles data transfers between the register file and other memory components and the control unit, which manages the flow of instructions and oversees all operations within the processor. Aside from these four components, the processor also contains several subsystems that manage memory and data, maintain security, and improve system performance. The ALU is the processor's computational engine. It's responsible for executing several types of operations. Arithmetic operations. These are basic mathematical calculations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Logical operations, this includes operations such as AND, OR, NOT, or exclusive OR. Comparison operations, the ALU can determine the relationship between two numbers, such as whether they are equal or if one is greater than the other. And shift operations, these move all the bits in a binary number to the left or right by a specified number of positions. The ALU receives an instruction and data as inputs and produces a result. Aside from the actual output, the ALU also produces several signals that provide context about the result. These signals can include a zero flag, a sign flag, a carry flag, an overflow flag, and other indicators. Next, we have a set of small high-speed memory units called registers. Their purpose is to temporarily hold data and instructions that are being actively used, which provides the processor with immediate access to the relevant information. For example, the inputs to the ALU may come from specific registers within the register file. Registers are typically grouped based on their purpose. General purpose registers are used for a wide range of tasks, like holding data for ALU operations, storing intermediate results, or keeping memory addresses. In contrast, special purpose registers have dedicated roles, such as storing the address of the next instruction or holding important processor flags. Vector registers are wide registers that allow a processor to perform an operation on multiple data elements at the same time. A load store unit is an execution unit within the processor dedicated exclusively to managing data transfers between the processor's register file and external memory. The LSU can execute load instructions to retrieve data from memory into a register and store instructions to write register data back to memory. And finally, we have the control unit, which contains the main logic of the processor. Its job is to fetch instructions from memory, decode, and execute them, while managing all other components. To ensure these components communicate and operate in sync, the processor uses a clock to set the pace. It generates a continuous series of timed electrical pulses that coordinate all internal operations. Every action within the CPU is synchronized with these pulses. The rate at which these pulses are generated is known as the clock rate, or clock speed, measured in hertz, or in modern computers, gigahertz, which means billions of clock cycles per second. A higher clock rate means the CPU can complete more instructions per second. All these components communicate with each other using a complex network of internal electrical lines called buses.
These buses transmit data, instructions, and control signals between the different components of the processor. They are the communication infrastructure of the CPU. The processor's components work together to execute a program through a continuous process called the instruction cycle. A classic instruction cycle includes five main stages. The cycle begins with the fetch stage. The control unit looks at a special purpose register called the program counter, which stores the memory address of the next instruction to be executed. The control unit then fetches this instruction from memory and brings it into a register called the instruction register. The program counter is then incremented so it points to the next instruction in the program. The second stage is the decode stage. The control unit takes the instruction fetched from memory and decodes it figuring out what operation to perform and which registers or memory locations are involved. For example, the instruction add R1, R2 adds the numbers found in registers R1 and R2 and stores the result back into R1. The word add represents the operation code, usually just called opcode, which tells the processor to perform an addition. The R1 and R2 registers are called the operands. They tell the processor the sources of information and the destination of the result. At this stage, the control unit's job is to translate this instruction into a series of signals and transmit them to the other components to prepare them for execution. During the execute stage, the processor performs the operation specified by the decoded instruction. The specific action depends on the instruction type. For instance, an arithmetic or logical operation is performed by the ALU. Data movement between registers and memory is handled by a load store unit, which starts in the execute stage and continues into the next one, the memory stage. And a conditional jump instruction might update the program counter register to a new memory address, which changes the flow of execution. The final stages of the classic five-stage instruction pipeline are the memory and write-back stages. These stages handle data access to memory and the final storage of the result. They are optional and will happen only if the instruction requires them. Learning computer science and computer architecture shouldn't be complicated, but unfortunately, sometimes it is. That's why I'm writing a series of short ebooks, each concentrated around a single topic. I include illustrations, examples, and really cool fun facts in each book. If you're interested in learning about CPUs and how they work, follow the link in the description. And if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe. Thanks for supporting my work. I'll see you soon.